Why should the poor inhabitants of our towns and villages be constrained to fill the purses of ungodly priests? Since Jesus Christ shed his blood to free us, I demand that freedom. So John Wycliffe was a fascinating character and he lived in fascinating times. We tend to think of him just because of the Bible that he translated. The, the first English Bible was predominantly inspired by John Wycliffe, though we're not sure exactly how much of it he wrote himself. But Wycliffe's story as a human being is also fascinating. He came from the north of England from a small village, came down to Oxford and rose to become one of the highest academics, the, most, the, the cleverest and most well-known academics in the university. And from there, he challenged both the church and the state in different ways. And uh, he found himself trapped between the two. And our story will be investigating how these two huge institutions, the church and the state, were clashing and how Wycliffe in the middle was trying to find the path of truth between them both. So it's, it's a fascinating story and we're really excited to be able to tell it. It was a couple of years ago when I made my film about John Knox and as I was doing the research about it I discovered that the sort of simplistic approach that a lot of people take um, where John Knox is either goody or baddie depending on your perspective is very flawed and there's an awful lot more to these stories of Christians of the past. Uh, it, these are not fairy tales but they are much more exciting and much more involved and as I was doing my research around that, I realized that there was this whole phenomenon that occurred across Europe of the Christian Reformation, which is not a simplistic thing. It's not a, it's not a fairy tale, but it is a hugely exciting story about all these different characters with different motivations and agendas, and somehow God's purpose coming out through it all, through all these different flawed human beings uh, squabbling and fighting amongst themselves, and somehow um, God's purpose is revealed through that and Christianity which was on its knees we might say in the Middle Ages emerged to become again a strong and faithful force in Christendom and in the world and part of that story is John Wycliffe in many ways he is chapter one of this huge Reformation saga and so I wanted to tell John Wycliffe's story almost as a as a stepping out point for people to then go on to investigate the rest of the Reformation. John Wycliffe is known as the morning star of the Reformation, a first flash of light just before the dawn, the full dawn. And in many ways, he is the precursor. He goes beforehand and then everybody else follows. So looking at his story has been fascinating for me and I hope it will be fascinating for everybody else as they eventually get to watch the film too. I think the thing that made John Wycliffe stand out from the other reformers of his time was his focus on the Bible. It was putting the Bible at the front and center of everything that he believed that made him different and that makes him continue to be relevant to us today. Because there's lots of voices crying out for change. And here in the times of coronavirus, there's a lot of people who are saying we can't go back to the old normal. We have to find a new normal. But where do they get their ideas from what should be this new normal? Well, for Christians, our ideas come from the Bible. And putting the Bible front and center and not politics and not any other agenda is what Wycliffe did. And it's what excites me about telling his story again. Because I think that the most important thing for us today is to put the Bible front and center in our own lives, in our churches, and in society. One of the things I learned on Knox is the importance of historical accuracy. I wrote my first draft based on the research I had done up to that point. And then we started to film it and realized halfway through that some of what I had written was not 100% correct, or at least I couldn't remember where it was that I'd found these facts. And so we had to go back and do this massive re, uh, redraft, restructuring. Sometimes we had to refilm stuff that we'd already shot 
everything had to be backed up and absolutely accurate uh, in case it was challenged by anybody. And so this time, as we've been going through the writing of the script, I've been very carefully noting down where I'm getting all the facts from, so that alongside my script, I've got a full bibliography that uh, connects paragraph to paragraph with different texts uh, and articles to make sure that what I'm saying is true. The film will be a hybrid between documentary style and drama style, which means that we can take it in two filming chunks. And I would hope that by the end of this year, we'd be able to be finished filming the documentary style, where we go around different towns and cities and film our presenter talking to camera. And then perhaps in winter time or at the beginning of next year, we can shoot our drama stuff in a studio somewhere and um, add them all together and hopefully have the thing ready by the middle of or middle of or end of next year. If anyone is interested, uh, uh, www.morningstarfilm.co.uk is our website and we'd encourage people to go there to have a look at what we're doing and to contact us or to subscribe to our newsletter to get in touch and to find out a little bit more about how they can be involved in supporting this project. Join me in discovering the story of one of the most influential Christians of the Middle Ages. Join me on the quest to find the Morning Star.